Hi there, I'm Lena Anani, and you're listening to She Wrote a Book, where I interview amazing women from all over the world who also happen to be published authors. I created this show to educate, entertain, and inspire you to be the voice you want to hear in the world. Now let's get started. You are listening to episode number 143 of She Wrote a Book, and today I'm interviewing Catherine Basu, author of the book Superwoman Secrets Revealed, Successful Women Talk About Fitting and Fitness and Dare You to Join Them. This inspirational and action-oriented book takes you behind the scenes of the daily lives of high-powered women who cite fitness as a key to their success. Read it to learn how to change your world, and then the world, one workout at a time. Catherine Basu is an ACE certified personal trainer and the owner of Fit Armadillo. She has zero tolerance for diets, supplements, and detoxes, and not just because she's a huge fan of gluten full bread, but lots of love for those new to fitness. Again, her book is called Super Women's Secrets Revealed Successful Women Talk About Fitting and Fitness and Dare You to Join Them. You can find the link to purchase her book in our show notes for this episode at shewroteabook.com slash 143. So Catherine, it is such a pleasure to have you as a guest today. I am so excited to do this with you. Uh, my first question is this, what inspired you to write and publish your book? Sure. Well, first, thanks again for, for having me today. I'm so excited to be part of the other female authors on the show. So it's an honor. And uh, I, I will get to your question. <laughs> so So what inspired me to write the book, basically it's two things. The first was just a pile of inspirational interviews sitting on my computer for over a year. So those are actually the interviews with the women that are in my book that was recently published. And I interviewed these women, was told that they would be able to appear on this really popular blog that I was super excited about. And, you know, I I was asked to have the the interview shared there and not just asked, but also given an editor who I could email and I had his phone number as well. So sent in the first interview, was all well, all excited, told all my friends and family, and then waited a month, nothing, called and emailed, waited another month, and that just happened for a whole year. And then finally, after that year's time, and then another experience actually I had with, with one of the women in the book, uh, one part of the book is that the women in the book dare you to join them for these fitness challenges. And so I've been following the women on Instagram and, and social media myself, and I had a, you know, a bad off fitness day. And one of, the, one of the women had written a comment on one of my posts and that really inspired me, but I'm a personal trainer. So, you know, that's all good and well, but I don't want to be the only one being inspired by those stories. Right. So I was thinking about that, that experience happened. And then it was right around that year mark. And I thought, you know, I could try to pitch this, you know, this great group of interviews and stories to another blog or, I could maybe put it into a book. And I was really nervous to ask the women if they'd want to be in this book with me because, you know, I felt like I'd already let them down with the blog post series that was, that never happened, you know, a whole year later, but they were all really, uh, you know, positive about it and they were excited and they supported me in that. So we started that, that little journey. And I said, there were two things that inspired me. So the second was actually my dad who, he's the one that's always wanted to write a book. I just kind of had it happen because I had those stories I wanted to get out into the world that were inspiring me, but, but no one else. And, uh, he's, he's always wanted to write a book. And so, you know, one thing about my dad is that he, he, he says that the worst thing in life is to be a hypocrite. And so, you know, I've been trying to inspire him and, and tell him about him to get his book going, but I knew that if I had my book out there that I could, you know, be a little bit more inspirational to him because I wouldn't be a hypocrite anymore. I'd have the book myself so I could, <laughs> I can say, you have to write a book. Here's how, how great, you know, my life has been after writing my book and now you need to get yours out there too. So, so it was dad and then the stories from the women that were just, just sitting there were my two main things. I love it. I love that. Um, <laughs> it's, I always think it's funny how like parents like, um, inspire you to get things done from like sometimes from a negative aspect <laughs> like yes. you know it's like oh yeah, yeah I'll prove you wrong and sometimes like I need that from my parents to tell me that they don't believe in me and I'm like oh yeah and now it's kind of odd because now they actually believe in me with the whole comedian path that I'm on and they're like no we think you're gonna be successful we actually think you're gonna this is great I'm like oh crap what do I do with this like <laughs> who am I supposed to prove wrong <laughs> 
so I love it's that. It's so funny that you say that. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm trying to, to find, so if there's a Teddy Roosevelt quote uh, that my dad also, you know, my dad, he has a, always has a lot of quotes and wisdom, right? But you might know it from the, Theodore Roosevelt. It's not, it's all about, it's not the critic who counts. It's the, it's the person out there in the are, arena that, you know, at least, you know, he's, he's failing, but he's failing while daring greatly, uh, you know, instead of being one of those cold and timid souls who don't know victory or defeat. And so my dad loved that quote. And I had a time, this was more related to my business, but, you know, I started out my business. My dad wasn't so sure about it. And, you know, he, I mean, he wanted me to have a, you know, what he would think is a, a stable job, right? So starting your own business as an entrepreneur is not a very stable job to someone who was a physician and, you know, went to school, you know, knew he, he was going to have that physician job when he, when he got out and, and that was a lot different than, than being an entrepreneur. And so the first, you know, year or two, at least year and a half, he was really not so sure. And then there was one day where I was just ready to kind of give up and I was talking to my dad and he said his quote about, you know, you're out there doing it, you know, basically keep doing it. I thought, wait a minute, dad, I thought, I thought you didn't think this was a good idea. I love that. <laughs> What's going on? That is so, so yeah. awesome. So awesome. Well, thanks. Thanks, Dad, for being supportive now. That's great. Now it's now, yeah. now, it, now it's his turn to write that book. <laughs> I know. See? Yeah, I, I hope he's listening because he needs to write the book. But he does. <laughs> All right. So I want to talk to you a little bit more about your book title. Um, you mentioned yeah. Super Women, Secrets Revealed, right? So what is a super woman to you? What is, what's your definition of that? Yes, yeah, so this is like a really great conversation I was able to have with some women as I've been doing my book tour. And what I, what I want them to realize is that it's not this mystical version of Superwoman. You know, we see that on the title, and I think a lot of them think, oh, you know, that's like not something they really want to be. They don't want to be Superwoman. She's kind of this unrealistic version of a woman who, who meets all these unrealistic expectations that, you know, they're either putting on themselves or having put on themselves by, you know, friends, family, or, or society, right? So that's not the version we're, we're talking about. We're talking about these awesome women in the book who, to me, are, are just the version of superwoman that I want to be. So they, they're doing super things in the world, and they're, they're fueled by what fitness gives them. So more focus, more energy, more creativity to help them be that, that super version of their already pretty super selves, but be able to, to tackle more than they might already be able to be, already be doing on their own or just have more, more creativity uh, to bring to those, those tasks. So that's what I want people to think about when they think of the title, not this crazy version of, of the superwoman that is just that mystical version, the uni unicorn version, but really someone that is a good role model for them. Because I, I find often, you know, at least myself, um, now that I'm an aunt, I think about this a lot, but, you know, go to the, go to the store, see all these magazines with women on the covers that lead, the, lead these like really glamorous lives or lives you might think you want to have, but are, are, they're not really what when I really think about it, I want to have in my life, you know, I, I want to be able to be making a difference. And I think a lot of women have that idea as well, that they want to have more inspirational women to inspire them. And I definitely want that for my nieces. I want them to be able to go out in the world and be doing, doing cool things and making an impact and, and wanted to find some super women that could inspire them. And that's, that's what the women in the book are, especially to me. Um, they're able to really, really stand for something, something more than just, looking cute and uh and having a lot of money and acting or whatever you know we think a lot of the women are in, in our magazines totally yeah absolutely i mean there's different different avatars for what a superwoman is and so you mentioned so like a superwoman is someone who is dedicating their life basically to creating a better world um so i that just sounds like a huge task to take on how how does a superwoman fit in fitness with all of that on her plate. Yeah, so lots of little little tips and tricks. So the women in the in the book have definitely a lot of great ideas to share. I guess some of the the key ones are things like first of all starting small, like being okay with starting small. I think a lot of times as a personal trainer I find this often happens with athletes more than for former athletes anyways, more than anyone else where they think that and, and I'm guilty of this too, where if you can't do at least an hour in the gym or at least, you know, a five mile run, it might as well not even bother. Right. So the message there is, you know, if you're not doing anything though, you know, starting small is, is definitely better than nothing. And then in just for, in terms of the health benefits for fitness, even a 10 minute walk 
can can give you some good health benefits, bring you some more energy and focus to your work. So so just you know having women think about that as a great tip, being okay with okay, I'm sitting at my desk all day. I'm going to take a 10 minute walk on my lunch break and, and see how that can impact. Um, you know, other other key things are are trying to involve the support of others. So yeah, it's great if you want to hire a personal trainer. I'd be really happy if people want to come check out Spin Armadillo, but um, you know, they don't have to hire a, a trainer at, at my company to to get that support benefit. Having a, a friend or a coworker or a family member whether that's in person that you're actually enjoying your workout with, or even, you know, at the end of the day, you just text and say, Hey, I got my workout in. Did you, and just, you know, building that accountability that way support is really huge. Uh, and then, and then the third thing that's really big is just having your why your purpose connected to your fitness routines. That's, that's one reason the book is really talking about successful women that talk about how am I they're fitting in fitness because having that greater purpose, something that they want to accomplish in the world is a really great motivator for fitness. If if you're able to be healthy, you're able to accomplish things and and have more time to accomplish them. If you're not healthy, you're going to really struggle to, to be able to, to do uh, what your life's purpose is. Right. So I think um, having that, that connection is really, really strong. And it can be something simple. It could even just be, you know, I know for personal training clients of mine who want to be a good role model for their kids, even that's a really good why even just to get started versus, you know, I want to lose a hundred pounds before my reunion. That's in two weeks. Right. So, so I would say, uh, you know, being connected to your why having the support of uh, someone else. So whether it's your personal trainer or a friend or colleague or family member, and then, Oh, starting small, right. So not being afraid to just start with a small amount of time versus, you know, I, ha- I can only do an hour workout. Otherwise it's not worth it. Cause that's just not true. Awesome. Awesome. So, uh, great tips. My last question for you is this, what do you love most about being an author? Yeah. So this has really come about after, you know, finally having that, that hardback copy of the book ready. So I, I've actually published my ebook before the hardback and it took a little longer than I thought, but having that in my hands been exciting. And then just be able to go out and meet women, because of speaking opportunities I've been able to have now that I have the book, uh, just having those genuine conversations with women. So being real, especially that, that whole superwoman woman part, right. You know, trying to give ourselves, cut ourselves some slack, talk about that, but talk about how we can support each other as we're trying to work on, on any goal. So that's been really exciting. Uh, I think I sh- I've shared with you before that we are, uh, one of the opportunities I've had from the book tour is the opportunity to start a nonprofit women's networking group that I loved when I lived in Houston, Texas. Uh, here, now that I'm in uh, Hermosa Beach in the LA area, we're going to be starting that up. And that just came from, you know, genuine conversations that I had with women in that group when I was doing my book tour in Houston. So, um, yeah, it's just been really, really cool to have genuine conversations with women and to be able to support other women in in their goals um, from having the book. Perfect answer. I love it. Catherine, thank you so much for being our (laughs) special guest today. We will have a link to your book in the show notes for this episode. And our listeners can find that at shewriteabook.com slash 143 to learn more about our author and her motivational book. Thanks again, Catherine. Thanks, Lena. Thank you for listening to She Wrote a Book. If you enjoyed this episode, then subscribe now so you can automatically get access to all new episodes and feel free to share your inspired thoughts with us in the comments too. I'd love to hear from you. Until then, may you always feel good and make magic.